you ready write this down first in your heart before you pen it down on paper number one the first key to enjoying the shepherdhood the leadings of God is admit that you are limited please write it down the first key to enjoying and accessing God as your shepherd is to admit that you are limited first Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 9 the Bible clearly tells us there that we first Corinthians chapter 13 not 3 my apologies 13 and the orientation you are still limited we pride in all kinds of things I've traveled to Europe I've traveled to America I have a PhD and that is wonderful of person the meek the Bible says will he guide in judgment not the needy not the one who is in need of guidance the meek you know what it means to be meek meekness is a is a spiritual quality is a state of brokenness where you understand that i am limited another word for meekness is teachability hallelujah the ability to be teachable lord i thank you for that which you have given me but i admit i do not know everything please give us that scripture again the meek will he guide in judgment and he says the meek will he teach his ways so could it be that the reason why many people are unable to access the leadings of god and the ways of god is because there is a desire to know but there is no meekness admit that you are limited as a man of god admit that you are limited as a businessman admit that you are limited admittance is such a difficult thing for us especially in our civilization today because psychologically for many of us we translate admitting limitations to mean that we are mediocre to mean that we are not much so everybody likes to give um a give an attitude of invincibility to the degree to which you give a a picture of a superman that seems to be the degree to which a generation will listen to you and be loyal to you unfortunately as far as destiny is concerned that is absolute nonsense jesus who was the word incarnate as soon as he arrived by age 12 with no sense of shame and embarrassment he marched straight to the temple to go and learn you would think this was the person that the scripture was all about imagine jesus sitting in the temple and listening to them this was the word of god bound in earthly flesh i can imagine the doctors of the law saying do you understand this young man and he says yes sir the meek will he guide for someone here god is already speaking to you the reason why you have not been able to make progress is pride the inability to come before the lord and say father i do not know much would you teach me what's that song spirit lead me where my trust help me let me walk of God you must admit that you are limited father thank you in spite of the Bible school in spite of the seminary in spite of all the books that I've read I, I come before you expressing my ignorance and my limitations except you lead me I cannot lead these great people you see why the request of Solomon touched the heart of God how do you come to a man in the night and now give him an open check Solomon would have said that there are five kings that have threatened me. Oh God, kill them for me. Give me rest. And Solomon said, I am but a young man. I do not have the ability to lead this so great a people. Would you grant unto your servant an understanding heart? And the Bible says God was impressed. He was touched. For someone here, 
if you will only humble yourself before the mighty hand of God even now the remaining days of this year what God will do in your life will dwarf many years put together the meek will he guide there are many proud men of God there are many proud business people there are many people failing woefully and yet they will not listen and open up their heart to see the need to be guided there are people who are poor and broke and they will not listen the moment you want to talk about money they want to contribute as colleagues you are not getting it it's not working in your life there are people who are not doing well in ministry as a principle any area i don't have so much result i'm usually silent i don't i don't i only speak from the abundance of knowledge with results our world today is full of commentators commentators without results when you know how football is and some just pass now the person who is talking now has not been able to achieve anything and yet he's insulting someone whose weekly payment is his lifetime desire are we together now you must admit someone is having a small business for instance maybe you, you are just selling two or three items and only five people come to buy it and now you are giving all kinds of I think ShopRite can do like this I think this one can this people they are not really very wise if it was me and yet you have your own result there and absolutely nothing is working can I tell you in the name of Jesus I pray that anything that represents pride eating up your potential for rising to a, the next level I curse it from your life right now The meek will he guide in judgment there are people who don't know anything about marriage yet they are the first to comment on everything they are the first to give lectures and give all kinds of orientation there are people who don't know anything about finances and favor there is zero manifestation of favor not one not two zero and yet they can say anything about favor there are people who don't know jack about the anointing and yet they will want to teach you dimensions and dynamics and those who are really anointed are just hearing and watching the gap in knowledge garnished with pride Is God helping someone? You must admit that you are limited. That is not negative confession. It is not demeaning what God has done in your life. With brokenness, there is something I do not know. Lord, guide me. The meek will he guide. The moment I've taught you this, when God finds humility and finds brokenness, something there has to be something about this my financial situation I have done my best your best does not mean that is all to be done it is just the best you know based on your knowledge do you know let me tell you ignorance and pride can make simple things so difficult so difficult Apostle, I can drive. Okay, let someone who can drive help you. No, no, no. I've been driving for a long time. It's just I've not had the opportunity to go to the road. Just give me the car. You come back with two headlamps. Paul said it was just a slight mistake. You cannot, you are not getting this thing. It's as simple as that. Apostle, I can cook. Three hours, you are still roaming around in the kitchen. Nothing is done. Nothing is set. You are not even sure again of what you are doing. It was just a mistake. I think the stove or the... the <clears throat> Our standard of knowledge in this ministry is mastery. Until you are there, you are not yet there. Don't say I know to what degree. Are we together now? Yes. Admit that you are limited as a man of God. Spirit of the living God, I cry for your wisdom. I admit I do not know. I am limited. I can learn, I can do this, but I am limited. The Lord is nigh them that call upon him. Humility. Number two, very quickly. Is someone learning? What is the second key? 
to accessing the leadings and the guidance of God pray earnestly for divine direction pray earnestly for divine direction listen when it has to do with direction it is a risk to assume the devil can open a door for you that you will think it is God I've taught you even the prison has a door before you enter the prison a door must be open so just because a door is open you need to verify where that door is going there are some doors that are going into prison pray earnestly for divine direction first samuel chapter 30 and verse 8 first samuel 30 and verse 8 and david inquired of the lord saying shall i pursue after this troop i hope you know the man who is speaking was a warrior already had the arsenals to bring victory but he said no assumption shall i pursue after this troop shall i overtake them and the lord answered him pursue for thou shalt surely overtake them and without fail recover it is powerful when you are running with a sure word you don't see challenges on your way because you know that god listen it is vain it to wake up in the morning is that in your bible and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow just because you have money does not mean you should start business no the presence of capital is not a green light to start no we make all kinds of flimsy mistakes and we keep repeating it that's why god has sent you to the house of god can i tell you when you are physically prepared you stand the risk of making more mistakes because all the factors are there chances are excellent you will not respect the excellency of his voice shall i pursue shall i overtake and the lord says since you paid attention to my leadings go ahead and pursue you shall surely overtake and without fail recover all you must pray earnestly for divine direction and there are two ways you hear from god in prayer write it down please number one through the light from scripture so that will be two a light from scripture this is the first way God speaks to men in the place of prayer. Psalm 119, I believe verse 105. Please give it to us. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. So God speaks to you by giving you light from scripture. Is someone learning now? Light from scripture. In the place of prayer, serious prayer, not prayer and browsing not prayer and watching movie you are just watching the parts you don't like you quickly pray while you are with no no i mean heartfelt prayer when your spirit man is attuned pay attention to the scriptures that come sometimes they can be scriptures ordinarily you would not have remembered you see that but it just jumps up from the spirit is a time to write it down what could god be saying god speaks to us when we pray through the light that comes from scripture and then number two he speaks to us through the voice of his spirit isaiah 30 21 i hope you know god speaks to men yes he does and thine ears shall hear a word behind thee saying this is the way walk ye in it when ye turn to the right hand and when ye turn to the left you shall hear a voice in john 16 and verse 13 please give us john 16 and verse 13 jesus was teaching and he said how be it when he the spirit of truth is come the bible says he will guide you into all truth for he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak so the holy spirit speaks he speaks, he guides. The Bible says the, the Spirit speaketh expressly. Pay attention to the speakings of God when you pray. Most times when you hear God and it's not in the place of prayer, the margin of error is very, very wide. Let me tell you. Because you see, 
the 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 haziness that comes from the daily activities chances are excellent that what you thought you heard may not have been God so number one the first key to accessing the leadings of God is you must admit that you are limited and in need of his leadership number two you must pray earnestly for divine direction number three you must open up your heart for supernatural encounters you must open up your heart for supernatural encounters one of the ways that god leads men is by granting them access to supernatural encounters please write it down you must open up your heart for supernatural encounters particularly dreams and visions please write it down you must open up your heart for supernatural encounters particularly dreams and visions look up ladies and gentlemen can I tell you this I don't know what has happened to your dreams and visions but tonight in the name of Jesus let there be a correction of it there are certain heights that when you get to and your dreams and visions have not been purified you will destroy yourself and destroy others dreams are powerful prophetic channels that communicate the leadings of God otherwise Satan would not be interested in your dreams I can tell you he knows what is contained in dreams and visions Genesis 41 let's read the first seven verses Genesis chapter 41 please and it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh dreamed and behold he stood by the river reading to seven and behold there came up out of the river seven well-favored kind and fat flesh and they fed in the middle uh-huh verse 3 and behold seven other kind came up after them out of the river ill-favored and lean-fleshed and stood by the other kind upon the brink of the river Pharaoh is dreaming now and the ill-favored and lean flesh kind did eat up the seven well-favored one and Pharaoh awoke he slept again and he dreamed the second time I hope you know this was a revelation of something that had a national economic implication so why would God choose to reveal something that had that gravity I mean a whole nation could be wiped in famine and God chose dreams respect dreams are we together he dreamt the second time and behold seven ears of corn came up on one stalk rank and good six and behold seven thin ears blasted with the east wind sprung up after them final verse now it says and the seven thin ears devoured the seven rank and full ears and Pharaoh awoke and behold it was a dream there are many things that we have called dreams but they are prophetic blueprints for the next two, three, four, five, ten years of our lives. Sometimes warnings, sometimes green lights. But because we have not been able to discern, next year I have a series on prophetic experiences, dreams, visions, angelic encounters. I want to teach you this thing so that you will understand. You have to be able to understand the place of dreams, visions, and even prophetic experiences. If you're learning, say amen. In Exodus chapter 3, give us from verse 2 to 5. Exodus 3, 2 to 5. Watch this now. The Bible says, And the angel of the Lord appeared to him, the him being Moses now, in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked and behold, the bush burnt with fire and the bush was not consumed. Verse 3. It says, And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. While the bush help me now my screen why the bush is not burnt verse 4 now 
it says and when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see God called him out of the midst of the bush and said Moses Moses and he said here am I verse 5 it says draw nigh, draw not nigh here put off thy shoes for the place where thou standest is holy ground so he used a vision a prophetic experience remember that was the one encounter that turned a murderer to become a deliverer many have ignored supernatural encounters in first kings chapter 3 from verse 4 this was the encounter of solomon now always inspires me every time i read this the king went to gibeon the bible says and sacrificed there for that was the great high place a thousand burnt offerings did solomon offer upon the altar verse 5 it says in gibeon the lord appeared to solomon how so god can appear to men through dreams and god said ask what i shall give thee verse 6 and solomon said in the dream oh, God is asking him in a dream. He's replying in a dream. Imagine if you were Solomon's wife. You went to bed. Honey see you in the morning. And while you are sleeping, turning east and west. And all the things people do when they are sleeping. You know, people can turn literally 180 degrees while they are sleeping and not even be aware. They just get up and know that the pillow is... People sleep in all kinds of interesting ways. While all that drama is happening, a man is encountering the God of the Bible in a very destiny-defining way. The wisdom that he would wake up with would be what would distinguish him as the wisest man that ever lived. And yet God chose a dream. Thou hast shown unto your servant great kindness and all of that and all of that. And he asked him for several things. Let's go to verse 13 for sake of time. Let's just do 13 to 16 and then we'll end. He answered him and said, because you have not asked for the life of your enemies, I have given you understanding like no other person has got. And then he says, and I have also given thee, 13 now, that which thou hast not asked, both riches in the dream now. How do you give riches in a dream? How do you give honor in a dream? So that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all your days. 14. It says, and if thou will walk in my way, still in the dream, and keep my statutes and my commandments, as thy father David did walk, then I will lengthen your days. Long life, still in the dream. Last verse, please. Of verse 15 now. And Solomon awoke. So it was a dream. And behold, again the Bible says, it was a dream and he came to Jerusalem and stood before the ark of the Lord and offered up burnt offerings and offered peace offerings and made a feast to all his servants that means he said let's dance and rejoice and the people say wow the king is in a good mood not knowing that a transaction has happened in a dream could it be that throughout this year God has been trying to transact realities with men it is not only when you come to church like this ladies and gentlemen every time you go to sleep see it as an opportunity to step into a realm where destinies are defined because you do not know these demons are also waiting with their package it's like a menu fear intimidation and the moment you lay your head there you are in secondary school writing a demonic exam that you never pass or that never finishes and if there is anybody here under the sound of my voice going through those wicked experiences seeing yourself in a former house writing exams that never finish in the name of jesus christ i declare you are delivered right now only a shoe will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no end in my life only a sure will reign forever we can access the leadings of god when we are open to supernatural encounters in Matthew chapter 3, please give us verse 13. This one disturbed me seriously because it concerned Jesus himself. 
I hope you know that when Jesus was born, he could die. I hope you know that. Matthew 2 from verse 13. The Bible says, Matthew 2, not 3, 2. 2 and verse 13. And when they were departed, the Magi now, remember? The Magi came to just pay homage to Jesus. Little baby Jesus now. Baby Jesus could die. If he could not die, God will not ask that they run away with him. So don't just say Jesus saved sinners. He had to be alive to be able to save sinners. He was going to die. But if he died as a baby, your sins will not be saved. That would just be obituary, not salvation. And when they were departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph. How? In a dream again. Saying, arise, take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt. Look at the exact, look at the, the details. Arise, take the child and he told him where to go to. He would have said, arise and run away. What if he ran to report to Herod? Herod will say, you are welcome. There's a room here for you. Both you and the child, wait there. It's not enough to say, God told me to move. To where? He, he, he spoke to him. He said, arise and flee into Egypt. Then here now, he says, and be thou there until I come to you again with a word. My God, may God restore the accuracy of his leadings. May God restore the accuracy of his leadings in the name of Jesus Christ. A man goes to bed. Joseph was a weak, ordinary man. He would have died. Jesus would have died. And the entire plan of redemption would have been aborted. When you see the excellency of their parenting, it was not because they were superior parents. They didn't go through parents counseling. They only knew how to hear. Maybe God is speaking to a family here. Your ability to hear concerning your children will really be the key to their rising. Thank God for all the intellectual systems that help to feed your mind, but nothing will replace the accuracy of the hearing of You can give birth to a child and God comes to you and say, this child is ordained to be a prophet to the nations. Take him to a missionary school in Lagos or in Abuja. You have heard the word. No matter what confusion comes, you will say, I know God said this. Keep that scripture, please. Remain there until I bring you word. And he told him why. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Next verse. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by the night and departed. How do you get up from a dream and do exactly what you saw? The kind of dreams we're having now. If you do everything in your dream, you would have been dead by now. Because our dreams are so weak and not purified by the power of God. You dream and you see yourself killing your mother. If you get up and do the same thing, wouldn't she die? You, you see how Satan has hijacked our dreams because of insensitivity. May there be restoration this night. You may say, okay, apostle, I'm not inclined towards the prophetic. I may not have the hearing eye and the seeing ear, but a dream is a blessing that God gave every man. All you need to do is to sleep. Please help them. Give us that scripture. Let's finish it, please. Now, verse 15. The Bible says, And he was there, as he was directed by the dream, until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled that which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, that out of Egypt I have called my son. Supernatural experiences. I shared with you my encounters when... In 2013, I think he was preparing and hoping, just trying to see if it was possible to come down to Abuja. And the word of the Lord just came with a very serious encounter. A plane that lifted from Zaria, it was written E and I, on his way to Abuja. Just when it was about to land, it crashed. That one, the dream was straightforward. Are we together? 
it was the reason why in 2018 when the Lord came to me and began to speak to me about moving to Abuja it took me three years I struggled with the voice of God verifications upon verifications because destinies will be part of that decision there are decisions you don't make carelessly except you are selfish hallelujah there are people who just get up and say I feel like leaving my job what happens to your five children how do you feel like leaving your job I feel like driving my wife I feel like having three more children you see we, we we don't listen to God and you find out that the three more children you have are the ones that give you headache because God said stop you didn't hear are we together it's an uncomfortable message tonight but open up your heart to listen please open up your heart to listen because we are going to pray tonight and one of the prayer points will be purify my experiences so that there are no confusions every access that the devil has to my dreams and my visions because i don't have time i'm not teaching on this i'm just teaching it as a byproduct of the leadership of the spirit otherwise i would have told you there is something called lying visions many today are sincere victims of this a combination of your emotions and an advantage that demons have taken and many people are being manipulated today it is maritally financially there are people in all kinds of confusions this is why we need to understand the accuracy and the leadings of God there are lying spirits that spoke to people in dreams your father is about to die that company is yours and the boy just sits down is waiting every day I know what I had there are people today you see by reason of what I do I am amazed at the things people do and the confidence they have they tell you that God spoke to me and when you vet them you will truly know they had from the spirit except that by judging from the lens of scripture it was something else but as far as their conviction is concerned they had the right to be that convicted because of the clarity of what came to them. But when you judge it from the lens of scripture, it was not God. Please listen carefully. And you can be a prophet and still be in error. Just follow me. I'm a good pilot. We are flying high, but we will land safe. In the name of Jesus Christ. Supernatural encounters. I know somebody that I once prayed and ministered deliverance to a lady this lady got up and started running out of the house going to some river and you know and she said voices speak do you know how many people have committed suicide today and they will tell you a voice said kill yourself kill your wife no you judge the speakings of God against the integrity of Scripture but ladies and gentlemen if you have not opened up your heart to the realm of dreams and visions there is a dimension of the leadings of God that you may be robbing yourself of and we're going to pray tonight some of you do not have access to dreams it's the blessing and a privilege to all the saints in Christ and some of you our dreams have been corrupted all kinds of spirits have manipulated our dreams we lie down and we get up and have all kinds of leadings. We follow those leadings sincerely, but the end result shows that it was not God. Is someone learning? Number four. How do we access the voice of God? What are the many ways that the Bible teaches? What is one of them? Number three, supernatural encounters. Number four, are you ready now? One of the ways that God leads us in principle is through counsel from authorities, especially spiritual authorities. Please write it down. Counsel. You can access the leadings of God by opening up yourself to receive counsel from spiritual authorities fathers mentors elders men with results and experience they all form part of this group 
and they have earned the right to be able to give counsel proverbs chapter 1 from verse 1 follow me patiently as we read the proverb of solomon the son of david king of israel verse 2 it says to know wisdom and instruction to perceive the words of understanding three to receive the instruction of wisdom justice and judgment and equity verse four to give subtlety to the simple and to the young man knowledge and discretion that is the intent of the book of proverbs now it says the wise man will hear and increase learning and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels verse six to understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. Seven, it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Eight, my son, a father is speaking to a son now, hear the instruction of thy father and forsake not the law of thy mother. Is someone learning? Verse 9, for they shall be an ornament of grace unto your head and chains about your neck. That means they will bring you honor. My son, if sinners entice thee, this is counsel coming from a father, consent thou not. Next verse. If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let us lock privily for the innocent without cause. This is a young man naively exploring life and destiny and the father is saying these are the options you will find on the way when you see these options manifest remember the counsel of a father he said consent thou not 12 let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole as those that go down to the pit we shall find all precious substance and we shall fill our houses with spoil 14 cast in thy lot among us let us all have one purse 15 now we're reading to 19 it says my son walk not thou in the way with them god is speaking to a son through the wisdom of authority refrain thy foot from their path he says verse 16 for their feet run to do evil and make haste to shed blood 17 surely in vain is the net spread in the sight of any bird do you know what that means when you put a a um a, what they call it a net a bird has had access to a higher altitude and it can see he's saying one who is open to counsel is like a bird that is higher than the limitation that put that that the devil the trap that he puts for you verse 18 and they lay wait for their own blood and lock privily for their own lives the last verse now 19 it says so are the ways of everyone that is greedy of gain which taketh away the life of the owners thereof counsel from a father to his son this is my counsel to you as you sojourn you are going to meet this and that and that options but every time you are presented with these options, the Lord is speaking to you through my voice. Can I tell you, many people have been saved from disaster because of counsel. Counsel is powerful. Counsel is powerful. There is nobody who should ever outgrow the need to be counseled. Are we together? Again, this is where the pride of a generation comes in. And then what the Bible calls vain glory. We feel because I have achieved this and that and that, we are not open to counsel. Counsel is very, very important. Every time I have the honor of meeting any of our fathers of faith or anybody who has accomplished something that I consider to be a voice or a stakeholder in my life, I listen very carefully. I ask intelligent questions and my heart is opened to receive to hear what they say even if i don't exactly see things that way at least i give it a listening ear oh do ministry this way do this this way okay i listen albeit i will go to god in prayer but i i, I respect results when i hear counsel from spiritual authorities when you are open to receive counsel then you will access the leadings of god sometimes god will not come directly it may not be through a dream it may be through one wise counsel gentlemen the way you are doing ministry 
you are not going to get credibility this way and you will not rise take away this take away that do ministry with integrity this is how it is done I remember a gentleman who came and met me and this guy had posters as if he was coming out for election I said what is this he said I'm beginning a ministry I said from nowhere my brother come let me save you pain what in the world is this that's not how we do ministry you just come out from nowhere and carry posters and keep giving people by the roadside and believe that you will do ministry no that's not how it is done and I showed him from scripture that when God leads people he leads them step by step and he gives them territories little by little he said lest you occupy an empty territory that you do not have the capacity to feel you see that when God moves people he moves people by growth little by little you will see a young man that has never bought a bicycle he just comes and apostle I saw a Range Rover somewhere I know God is a God of speed speed is not foolishness you go gradually do you know what it means to maintain a car at that level how much do you have see this is how and men of God we have to be wise and help people don't just pray about everything because they say you should pray about it can be a chance to give them wisdom hallelujah one time a gentleman met me, not, not in Abuja, and he said he wanted to use a particular stadium for a program. And I just laughed. He said, wow, what a powerful zeal and revelation. But you are about to pay the price. Most likely you will be in the prison. Most likely. I can already plot the graph of the pathway of that foolishness because he will most likely borrow money. He will most likely meet liars. He will not even know which organization. He does not even have the influence to confront the authorities that will give him access to the use of the place. So most likely, it's not prophecy. Most likely, just by the pathway of wisdom, you can know that that gentleman is about to destroy his ministry. Apostle, I know what I saw. Yes. Respect what you saw, but bring it to the table of counsel. Counsel is powerful. Let me tell you. I used to criticize men of God years ago when I started, not, not in a sarcastic way, but I just used to talk, you know, the zeal of trying to establish doctrine. It was an old woman that came one time after listening to me, she just called me and said, listen, my son, you are going very far. And by the time you start talking about men of God, you have not gotten to their level to know the challenges and the pressures that they have. So manage this with wisdom. That was a big deliverance in my life big deliverance you will never hear me talk out of sarcasm i may challenge wrong doctrines but my honor for the body of christ for authority for men and women of god is one of the greatest key that has opened my credibility across the body of christ because of one counsel is god speaking to someone you may be running around trying to meet prophets whereas your own mother carries the wisdom of the ancient you have not sat down to say mama i know you're a ceo flying across the world but could it be one counsel mama can give you she didn't go to school i know but the wisdom of god resides with her is someone learning open up yourself for counsel and when you are listening to people who have results counseling you even if you don't agree keep quiet respect and honor their speakings you can go back and cross check and edit like the Berean but at the point never sit with someone who has results and be discussing as colleagues it is foolishness please hear what I'm telling you don't say I'm a doctor we are all doctors you just graduated you are yet to get a job this man has been a professor of medicine for 23 years maybe before you were born as I, you know, I, I, there's something I need. And the person is watching you. When great people keep quiet and watch you, start praying. Because it means that they have seen that there's no hope talking to you again. I hope someone is getting wisdom in church. Listen to what I'm telling you. For some of you, you have ignored an opportunity to rise. Because when you sit down with the great, you sit down with pride and arrogance. Let me hear. You know, let me tell you this. I don't claim I know so much. But it is stupid for you to say I don't know anything. No. There are many people I talk with in ministry and the rest. And sometimes I'm speaking with them. This person does not have any results. And yet you see the person just talking. You are suffering. Doors are not opening. 
you think all it takes to ministry is preaching good luck <laughs> a mediocre world is very small you can go around it in a moment and not see a need to expand your mind are we together counsel for someone you need to write a list of all the things that are not working in your life and trust God for grace why is my business not working I've been in ministry I'm a person of integrity and I love the Lord don't just say pray for me I know if you declare one word all the trouble your foolishness just goes with one word you need counsel it took you years to build that kind of mindset what makes you believe one prophetic declare declaration will just take away losing you, there are wrong relationships you need to cut away from there is a reorientation and an approach to life and ministry and business you need to learn the law of honor there are many things you need to learn what makes you believe one prophetic prayer will just magically take you there no some of you have had access to great people and you abused it because of foolishness you need more than prayer you need counseling I'm hard tonight, ba. Sorry, oh, but listen, listen. It's from a heart of love. This is what should happen in the body of Christ. I am one believer who believes in translating spirituality to a context that improves your life, where you can go back and bring results, results that are potent, results that work. For someone, you may need to call someone and say, I'm so sorry. I, I downplayed your counsel in spite of the results that you have given my sincere apologies even if you do not agree with great men do not fight them respect their opinions you can live quietly are we together now years ago a man came to me and he wanted me to pray and um, it was about a financial issue because his children he was not able to pay for their your, their needs and he was getting frustrated and he said apostle you, you need to help me and I was trying to explain to him I said no 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 and then he made a statement he said you don't know what it means to pay the school fees of two children then I looked at him with pity mixed with honor <laughs> if two children are giving you this kind of headache and you see somebody leading a ministry like this and you are saying to you you don't know what it means to pay the school fees of two children <laughs> there is nothing sustainable that is by luck just have that at the back of your mind you can have short-term success by luck but there is nothing sustainable that is by luck. Believe me. Maybe God is speaking to a politician here. You are about to start and someone has been in politics. Even if the person has not succeeded, he has failed enough to be able to help you. Respect failure as much as you respect success. In fact, fear people who have not failed. They are too, they are too innocent to counsel you. There is a requisite level of failure you must carry as a badge to balance your understanding in counseling people. Believe me, anybody who comes to you with 100 over 100 is still a child in the school of success. There, there is a requisite scar that gives you a balanced perspective. Have you failed enough to be able to talk to me? Don't tell me all the stories I just prayed and the person was healed I just spoke and they gave me an auditorium you are not the person to counsel me I respect you carry your results until you learn the other side of life my goodness there are people that have failed enough and they can talk to you when they talk to you they utter from their pain their pain has been turned to wisdom every sentence is a life lesson when you find failures who have become successful respect them beyond the results you see 
a man who tells you I came to Abuja here and for five years I did ministry wrongly I met false prophets I dabbled my hands into so many things but thank God today I'm working in integrity sit down quietly with a notebook and learn how to do ministry right a woman who tells you I have been barren for 10 years now God gave me three sets of twins forget the twins and learn wisdom don't just respect crowns, respect scars. The wise respect both scars and crowns. Can I encourage someone? Your failure is still an asset. Don't throw it, archive it. It will be one of the qualifiers for your speaking to people tomorrow. Ah, God is speaking to someone tonight. Help that woman, please. Apostle, I have cried. I have failed in life. I know what it means to be an irresponsible father. Don't throw that experience. Archive it. One day you will use from that wisdom and mentor an arrogant young man who thinks life is so easy. Most times when we are starting out in life, because of the leverage of prayer, the prophetic, or generally life just playing games with you you can believe life is so easy and you are wondering so why are people crying like this I just got married and three months it's been so rosy in fact my wife is the best thing that has happened to me and you go online and embarrass yourself and someone who has been married for 15 years he said may God help you <laughs> after two years you just turn and start saying life is unpredictable all this this unwise things that people do But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. My glory, you lift my head. for someone do not just respect those who have succeeded alone respect those who have failed not everybody fails respect those who have failed failure is an asset when you can turn it to power Paul said let no man trouble me it is not only anointing that I have there are scars man of God that you failed in ministry and came here and sat down now I know men will laugh at you and say you don't have results don't worry there is a story through your pain that only you can give there is a time that destiny will make a roll call where are those who have failed come forward and you will be the only one to be able to stand and come out because your failure has earned you a place in destiny you know what it means to be attacked you know what it means to be barren you know what it means to do ministry for one year without anybody sowing into your life gentlemen don't just look for those who live in mansions go and look for mama and let her teach you the secret of happiness in a hut there is something you need to learn because the money you think will come from the mansion you will be surprised you don't know the depression and the drugs that surround those mansions sometimes you need to learn from both a king but you need to learn from the slave that is in his palace there is something the slave can tell you that even the king does not know the slave is the one who cleans the palace he knows what he has seen there my glory the lifter up of my head you're my glory 
the lifter up of my head. He's my glory, the lifter up of my head. You are my glory, the lifter up of my head. That would be somebody's song. That you're my glory, the lifter up of my head. Mama, you may be struggling with four children and none of them seems to have been great. Let them laugh at you. There is a story only you can tell. Continue being diligent, training the children. Let the naysayers keep gossiping. Shame on her. Four children, nobody rising. Don't worry. Let them celebrate their success while you celebrate the art of turning failure to success. the Lord speak to a young virgin through an angel and says Mary you are highly favored and the next thing that follows that woman is pain controversy there was nothing in the life of Mary that I have seen that looked like favor an angel comes from heaven and says you are highly favored I would expect the king to call her and say I had a dream there is free land for you as soon as Jesus is born you become tax-free that sounds to me like favor so God calls car favor he calls controversy favor he calls pain favor why would you say a woman is high ah, God is speaking to someone don't listen you may cry but don't be embarrassed about your failures again there is glory through the sky there is something about the speaking of God, Ba, that until you are at your lowest moment, there is something about the voice of God you cannot hear. There is, there is a pain requirement to hear certain things about God. Tonight's message is very deep. For some of you, you really will not understand it this night. You are too innocent. You have been shielded by the sacrifices of others. You may not really understand this. There is a pain requirement that brings out the clarity and the purity of the voice of God. There is a way a man of God fails and fails and fails in ministry that he goes back and he says, Lord, teach me. When he writes a book about the leadership of the spirit, read it. That pain has purified any flesh and the need to make a name. It's gone. That is the reason why when people go through things and they come out of it, they usually come out with an anointing. Barren for 16 years, laughed at by people. As she gets triplets, it's not only children she got. The day she speaks over you, she will terminate barrenness in a moment because every time she sees you like the high priest, she's touched with the feelings of your infirmity. Let me tell you the truth. You see, many of you see today that I pray for people and I'm just speaking and you see the power of God. It's not only prayer and anointing, no. There is a pain requirement that has reached down to the bowels of power and has drawn genuine, authentic spiritual power. When I see oppression, I know because I have been oppressed. Counsel. 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 Is someone hearing? You may need to humble yourself. Seek counsel. Godly counsel. Not on wise counsel. Sit down. There has to be a way about my life. Speak to me, God. Speak to me. Speak to me. Ministry has to work. This thing between me and my wife, we are beating ourselves every day. And then everybody will enter his room personally and pray in tongues. It shouldn't be like that. Where there is new wine 
There is new power, there is new freedom, the kingdom is here. I lay down my own place to carry on new fire today. The first time we had our crusade, we were owing we were not much things did not go well I knew it was a process but I said Lord we cannot do ministry this way no. I don't want to live a life where you are preaching and you are owing you are in trouble many people are, are dying right now there are many preachers that cannot stand on stage and preach people just fall down and die like that because of a pile of problems and I said, I don't want to have to manipulate people. I, I'm going to encounter a lot of wealthy and influential people. Why do I have to change my sermons? Because I want to attract favor. There has to be a way. Through desire, a man, having separated himself. Please hear me. For someone right now, what you are hearing from me is not just a preacher. It is pain giving you counsel. Man of God. The way you are doing ministry you are only going to end up in jealousy and pain and you will join the queue of frustrated people and you will think everybody went to collect charm from a herbalist retrace your step and go back through the power and the dignity of kingdom integrity dig that well and find treasures that last are we learning this is more than preaching tonight, oh. This is the Spirit of God speaking to you. There are many of you, you need to stop what you are doing now. Stop that business, stop that contract, whatever. Just stop and seek counsel. Because your continuing it is about to reschedule another season of pain. Listen to me. Time does not turn ignorance to knowledge. Time does not turn pain to joy. You must bridge time with wisdom. Are we together? Seek counsel. I thought I had God, but the five areas I thought I had God, none of them has produced the result that I want. I think I need to go back and find out. I may be missing something about hearing God. I thought God said I should start ministry. But I started and it looks like it's not God. Let me go back again. Three days before Koinonia would start in Abuja here, I was still on a retreat, re-verifying again. God, please, is it you? Look beyond my humanity and let me hear from you again. If it is not you, I will cancel it. Let's finish up. So number four, counsel from spiritual authorities. Number five, the fifth platform that is available to access the leadings of God is the prophetic ministry. This will be my last for tonight. And I want you to please pay attention. The prophetic ministry, both the office of the prophetic and then revelatory gifts. The prophetic ministry is a very unique ministry given by God to the body of Christ because when you look beyond the imperfections and the imbalances around the prophetic, the prophetic is a mysteriously powerful tool that can bring rest and direction, comfort to a man within a moment. Age-long confusion and captivity can come to end in a moment if and when the prophetic is, ad, is, ad, is administered within its jurisdiction of relevance. An example of the power of the prophetic reflecting the leadings of God. First Samuel chapter 10 beginning from verse 1 to 7 please. First Samuel 10, 1 to 7. This was the encounter between Saul and prophet Samuel the Bible says then Samuel took a vial of oil and poured it upon his head the he being Saul and kissed him and said 
Is it not because the Lord hath anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance? Verse 2. When thou art departed from me today, you shall find two men by Rachel's sepulchre in the border of Benjamin at Zelzah, and they will say unto thee, The asses which thou wentest to seek have been found, and lo, thy father had left the care of the asses and sorrowed for you, saying, What shall I do? Thinking his son had been devoured maybe by a beast or so. Verse 3. Then thou shalt go forward. That's the assignment of the prophetic. It helps you to go on forward from thence. And thou shalt come to the plain of Tabor. And there shall meet thee three men going up to God to Bethel. One carrying three kids and another carrying three loaves of bread. And another carrying a bottle of wine. Verse 4. It says, and they shall salute thee and give thee two loaves of bread. Which thou shalt receive of their hands. Five. And after that you shall come to the hill of God where is the garrison of the Philistines and it shall come to pass when thou art come thither to the city that thou shalt meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place with the psaltery and tablet and pipe and harp before them and they, sh and they shall prophesy. Verse 6 now. It says, And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you and thou shalt prophesy with them and shall be turned into another man the last verse it says and let it be when these signs are come unto you that you shall do as occasion serves you because they have become proof that god is with you the prophetic ministry is very very powerful because of its unique ability to access the eyes and the ears of the spirit and to reach into the past and to re reach into the future transport spiritual realities and bring it to you now there are two dimensions of the prophetic as you may have learned foretelling that has to do with declaring things before they happen and forth telling declaring things to make them happen one is revelatory another is creative you need to know this are we together two dimensions two levels of the prophetic there is the prophetic that declares happenings events before they happen it is revelatory there is the prophetic that declares things to make them happen it is creative both are dimensions of the prophetic but now i'm particularly talking about the revelatory dimension of the prophetic another example of this we find maybe for time's sake we may not really be able to read everything is the story of a man prophet called elisha king ben Hadad, and then one of his boys called hazael you find that in second kings chapter 8 from verse 7 second kings chapter 8 from verse 7 elisha came to damascus and ben Hadad, the king of syria was sick the bible says it was told him saying the man of god is here verse 8 and the king said unto Hazael, Hazael was like an aid to him, take due present in the hand and go and give the man of God and inquire of the Lord. He said, inquire of the Lord, but through the prophetic, shall I recover from this disease? Have you seen why kings in ancient times were great? Because they didn't take chances. They took advantage of the prophetic. So Hazael went to meet Elisha now and gave him a present. Even every good thing of Damascus, 40 camels burden, can you imagine? Just to inquire of a prophet. And he said, thy son ben Hadad, king of Syria, had sent me to you, saying, shall I recover from this disease? This is where I want you to lend me your attention now. Pay attention. See the power of the prophetic. And Elisha said unto him, go and say to him, thou mayest certainly recover. But Hazael, let me tell you the truth. I have seen it he shall die he said listen I don't want to break his heart just tell him he shall recover but I will tell you the truth I have seen it as a prophet he shall die now 11 is where my story begins Elisha now turned down his countenance until he was ashamed and he started crying after telling Hazael that Elisha now starts to cry and Hazael verse 12 looks at him and he says my lord why are you crying 
and he said because I have seen the evil that you Hazael will bring you are going to set their strongholds on fire there are young men you will slay with a sword you will rip children out of the stomachs of women who are with child can you imagine the prophet was saying I'm weeping because you Hazael as innocent as you look as a messenger now I have seen by revelation that you will become king and you will be a cruel and a wicked king I am warning you now hear what he said Hazael verse 13 Hazael said but what is your servant a dog that he shall do this great thing you see the prophetic has reached into the future and he's saying young man you are still surrounded with all kinds of poverty and pain your loyalty is not genuine it's just because you are in a condition you've not been exposed to the delicacy of the palace i have seen that there is evil in your heart instead of the man to say pray for me i don't know my tendencies in the future he said the lord has shown me that thou shall be king over syria when you read that story the life of Hazael had to be cut short because when he became king he was cruel and he was wicked everything Elisha said that he said he would not do he did the prophetic can look at an armed robber today and say don't throw him completely there is a prophet in him the prophetic can see a supposed well-behaved gentleman today and say this boy needs counseling say no 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 he's my finest of sons he said you don't know what this gentleman can become the prophetic has a way of reaching to discern the intent in the heart of men that even the careers do not even know is resident within their heart there is almost nothing happening across the nations of the earth that has not been forewarned by scripture and with the lips of prophets some ignored some received Now, the prophetic, sadly, just like the apostolic also, has had its abuses and imbalances because, you see, the nature of the prophetic is that because the prophetic appeals to your emotions and your psychology directly, everyone wants a sense of security and certainty. It's a psychological need. So if I prophesy to you right now, and I'm, I'm not just declaring, I call your name and I tell you tomorrow, one billion naira is coming into your account from somebody you see you will be excited and afraid and many other things that by the time that one billion comes tomorrow the next time i say don't travel you will not travel because the memories of the results from the last prophecy this is what has sadly turned many people in the body of christ especially the prophetic community into slaves these are the imbalances that need to be dealt with because the prophetic has a side effect the prophetic commands tremendous loyalty because of the result that it produces and if and when that prophet or the person operating in the prophetic does not fear god sincerely you can turn god's people into animals there are marriages today that have broken because of the prophetic there are children there are people who have gone out of the will of god because they came to honor the prophetic so as much as i talk about the prophetic it should never be ignored but i can tell you there are many biblical requirements that need to be in place before you open up your heart to the prophetic before i receive from you as a prophetic as a prophetic person there are many things i need to look at number one i need to look at the strength of your consecration number two i need to look at your prayer life number three i need to see the supremacy of the word of god at work in your life if i do not find these things i do not trust your speaking 